I want to take a minute today and talk to you about the way the enemy will try to devour the promises of God in our life. In Genesis 15, we see um, um, God interacting with Abram, and God gives Abram these amazing promises. He tells him how he's going to be his exceeding and great reward, and then he gives him this promise of, of an heir. And, and Abram receives the promise, and God even says that he counts Abram righteous because of his faith. But I find it interesting that right after that, the enemy starts assailing Abram with questions of fears and doubts. Because in Genesis 15, 8, Abram cries out to the Lord soon after he's received these promises, O oh Lord, how will I know that you will give these promises to me? And the Lord speaks to Abram, and he actually asks Abram to give him an offering. So Abram goes out, and he prepares the offering as the Lord told him to. And we see in Genesis 15 that as soon as Abram has prepared the offering, and I want to encourage you here to remember that God doesn't need our offerings. He asks us to give offerings, not because he's in lack and he needs it, but he, he, gives, he asks us to give offerings so that we're reminded of who our God is. Because as we give offerings to God, as we give offerings of praise and offerings of worship and offerings of trust, and, and we, we praise God, we worship God, we're reminded what he's like. And that brings us into a greater faith that, to believe for the impossible things that we, we were reminded he's well able to do. So giving God's offering, giving God offering of praise and of worship and of trust and of thanksgiving, that's our way. God's telling us, I want to remind you of how great I am and how well able I am. God asks us for those kinds of offerings, not because he needs them, but because we need them, because we often come into places of doubt when we don't see the promise come forth right away. And that's what we see here with Abram. God gives him the promise. Abram comes into doubt and says, Lord, how will I know that you will give me these things? And God says, prepare an offering for me. So Abram goes and he prepares the offering. And what I find interesting is almost immediately when he's prepared the offering, we see in the natural vultures come to try to devour the offering, to try to steal it. And Abram does something very important. He doesn't just go, oh man, they're going to steal my offering, I give up. No, he chases the vultures away. And there's a prophetic picture in that, of when we're believing for something from God, when we're believing for his really big promises, and, and fear and doubt come in, we need to really get focused on praising God, worshiping God, giving offerings to God, offerings of thanksgiving, offerings of, 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 of worship and praise, and saying, God, I don't know how it's going to happen, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I trust you, I praise you, I worship you and then we need to be aware when the enemy sends those things that would devour our offerings when he sends in fear and doubt when he sends in disbelief and discouragement when he sends in disappointment we need to do what Abram did we need to chase those vultures away we need to chase those things that would devour our offerings away and get even more focused on giving God praise, giving Him worship, and declaring our trust and declaring our thankfulness to Him that He is well able, that He can do the impossible, that He is at work, and that His promises are coming forth. So if you've been wrestling with fear or doubt or hopelessness or despair and any of those other vultures, just chase them away. Take a moment today and chase them away by declaring the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the trustworthiness of God, the faithfulness of God. You start worshiping God, you start praising God, and you watch. Those vultures will be chased away, and the things the enemy wanted to devour your offering, you'll actually be giving greater praise to God in no time.